Hello, dear. It's good to see a familiar face. Thank you for doing that, dear. Her smile is weary. Her earlier ebullience has left her. Morel still isn't feeling well. I convinced him to stay at Gary's to get some rest. I'm afraid the cold has really gotten to him. Yes. Field work is a young person's game, as they say. Her voice is shaky. What is going on here? Morel will eventually, or we'll talk Gary into going back out, perhaps. The lieutenant stares at his shoe, caked in mud. He doesn't say anything. No, you don't have to do that. Enough of this fool's errand. Morel will do it. Or Gary. You have work to do. I I've wasted enough of everyone's time. Be real. Gary is not going to help with this. That really is too much, sweetie. Thank you for your dedication, but I can see you're coming down with a cough yourself. Very strange. Why is she not letting you do this? It's like she's given up. Different? How? Answering a question with a question, for example. Defensive isn't her usual style. I'm in doubt, sweetie. That's all. Everyone is now and then. It's a... Uh, a strange feeling. I haven't really told this to anyone, but... You are a police officer. Do you ever wonder if some lovely story from your childhood is just that? A story? Or a dream? Hunching her shoulders now. She seems even smaller than she is. Like a sad young girl. Seeing the Insulindian Phasmid was just a story I used to tell people. I didn't really think about whether it was real or not. Morel's so proud of it. He always tells everyone. A terrible sting in the heart. Regret. No, at least I don't think I did, but Morel was so eager to believe my story was evidence of the Phasmid's existence that I'm some queen of the cryptozoologists. That, and for years his belief made me believe too. That I am a queen? An extraordinary witness to grace. But now... We're both getting old, and he's still working himself sick out in those reeds looking for it. But what if I was just wrong? I think I was... The lieutenant opens his notebook, but doesn't write anything. An acorn is not the same as the tree. That requires time, diligence, and care. All qualities these two seem to share in abundance. But it is. We've spent years searching for the Phasmid, hunting it together. Without it, what are we? Just another pathetic old couple. If I hadn't led him down this path, he could have a steady job lecturing at a university. You know, this reminds you of the Perikonassian theory of love. In essence, love is a relay out of death. Generation by generation, our love remains in our progeny. Lay some of that on her. Oh, sweetie. I don't think the Pericarnassians were thinking of people in my situation. I was a paraplegic before we met. He didn't know before I arrived. On our first date. If I weren't the queen of the cryptozoologists, if I didn't tell him that story... She has to swallow to relax her throat. It's keeping her from talking. I 
I I've wasted enough of your time with this drama. I really must stop talking about it, lest I start crying and waste more of your time. What you have to know is, the Insul Indian fast myth probably does not exist. Let us fools chase our ghosts. There are a million better things to do with your life. Are there? Some of the other things are pretty bad. I'm not sure of anything. Sometimes I still see it, you know. The real memory. Not the memory of the memory, but it's so hard to tell the two apart. Rising. Unfolding from the reeds on a hot summer's day. Like a benevolent god. Either way, I should go. Poor Morel is running a fever, and I need to get him home to Jamrock before we overstay our welcome with Gary. Oh no, thank you, but I can get there on my own. This old thing is gas-powered. And then a taxi home. It's not so bad. Really? Oh, sweetie. Please don't get stuck on a dream. Take it from me and Morel. Okay, it's 1113 Tabernacle Road. Jamrock, but... A sigh. She doesn't think you'll need it. You're welcome, sweetie. I'm glad it helped you. Even though it turned out to be a... A waste of time. A dream. A fool's hope. Say her lips move in in silence. Like that, she drives off. The gas engine mutters quietly as she gets to the doors, then pushes them open. Outside, the cold, coastal wind blows. We should go to... Somewhere out there, a kilometer to the southeast, a gust of wind shakes the felled building, rattling dusty windows, beckoning with strange coldness to ask the wind once more. Hey, was there something you needed? Well, well, bringing him that new bird sure made a difference in his attitude. Hi, Gendarme. Another rendezvous. Hello, hello. So what brings you here? Admiring the atmosphere. What about you, officer? Really? Well, I look forward to that. Oh yes, let's see. He knocked on my door a few days after the lynching. I think he was going through the entire building, asking questions. Nothing. That I didn't see anything. Why shouldn't he? What friend? No. I don't think it came up. Muscular. Handsome. Strong. Like one of those military types. Yes, but he was speaking to someone on his earpiece. Yes, you know those tiny speaker microphones that fancy security guards sometimes wear. Just reporting back whatever I was telling him. Oh, let me think. He had an accent. He sounded like one of those mercenaries. He sounded vaguely Oranese. No, not vaguely, scratch that. He sounded definitely Oranese. Sure. Anything else on your mind? Oh, a committee. How interesting. And if I may ask, Shandarm, what is this committee about? He's all bemused skepticism. He doesn't actually care what you want with his friend. 
Oh, a big secret committee. I understand perfectly. In any case, I would love to help. But the thing is, I don't know where he is. We don't talk about everything, you see. He might have mentioned something about making a tour of some historical sites up the coast. In an unofficial capacity, of course. Not a clue. I'm not his agenda keeper, you see. I guess you will. You did? And how did you like him? Ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> Why not? A visitor from the first world. He's not like you and me, gendarme. He can always return. To his opportunities in Occident, Sir Leclay. Still. His coming and going brings some life to the village. Or is it just money? I don't know. Friends, I told you. Sunday friends. Friends who like to get together from time to time. <sighs> Betty won't be there when times get tough, I guess. It is. On Sundays. He has keys. And he likes the view. To the sea, I mean. Hmm? What about me, gendarme? Bye-bye, gendarme. Keep coming back. That's good, officer. Keep browsing those clothes. Keep saving that economy. Save the economy? That sounds off. Haven't you heard, officer? We've got to be economically conscious. Recycle your cash. Keep it in circulation. Don't buy new things. Buy eco. Look around, officer. You see all these premium goods just sitting there, not getting bought. We've got to keep the flow of goods moving. Is this really the economy we want to leave to our children? I can't go extinct, officer. I've got kids to feed. Once an economy goes extinct, it messes up the whole ecosystem. You've got to think about the consequences. Got to prepare for springtime, right? Hi again, Gendarme. 
It's the sports. He's a sports guy. All about that physical prowess and athletic skill. Nothing else here. Bye bye, gendarme. Hey, was there something you needed? No, you don't. It's not happening. He tries not to look at you. It's dangerous to acknowledge the karaoke man. You need to approach this situation logically. Ask him why he has the PA system installed if you can't use it. It's for the... It's for no one. It's a prop. I'm not letting anyone use it after the great karaoke catastrophe of 44. A lot of people got killed because some arsehole wanted to sing karaoke. Okay, yes, it's for some clients. Stop yelling. Well, we don't have any tapes. They all got stolen. The man in the vest and the violet shirt stares at the tape you've just given him. He begins to frown. Hard. Fine, fine. Climb on that stage and do your thing. Just get out of my hair. I'll plug it in for you. Damn this karaoke machine. I'm having it uninstalled, he mumbles to himself. Oh yeah. Time to do the damage. The stage is all set up for your performance. Feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. You feel a little dizzy, a little unsteady suddenly. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. The stage is all set up for your performance. Feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. You feel a little dizzy, a little unsteady suddenly. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. I can see that. The stage is all set up for your performance. Feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. You feel a little dizzy. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. The bar is full and buzzing with chatter. No one is paying you any attention. But still, you feel your knees turn to noodles. Okay, now a couple is looking at you. Even worse, you're sweating. They are going to hate you. Immediately, a loud feedback noise startles the room. You feel like an amateur. How are you supposed to hold the mic? Should you just sing into it? Where should you stand? Hands, where do you put your hands?
The stage is all set up for you. You feel? So, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. The stage, you feel? So, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I... The air is thick with anticipation. Someone dims the lights as the music starts. A lump's in your throat suddenly. To the tiny church there The smallest church in San San Though it once was larger How the real may rest there Down through the mist there Towards the seven sisters Towards those pale cliffs there I would often stay there In the tiny yard there I have been so glad here Looking forward to the past here <laughs> But now You are all alone None of this matters Most pathetic applause in the world, Harry, made of pity. No one liked you. Your words echo in the karaoke mic. People talk in the distance. A couple tries not to look at you. Quit yelling into the mic! You hear, or think you hear, uncomfortable shifting around. A bit of laughter, maybe. No one's saying anything. Um, I'm gonna unplug the mic now, okay? That's it. I'm unplugging it. That's it. You're unpowered. Let's go, officer. These people wouldn't know a good performance if it beat them in the ass. Yes, it was downright tragic, detective. I mean it, he thinks. To him, being a cop in the RCM was truly expressed in that performance. I see you found yourself a little something from my wardrobe. Not bad, not bad at all. What you can keep it. I don't mind. I can appreciate beauty when I see it. Is it now? <laughs> well, enjoy it. Bye-bye, gendarme.
Hi again, gendarme. Bye-bye, gendarme. Again, Gendarme. Could he be a member of the homosexual underground? Yes, this man is definitely one of the homos. I've seen them homos with my own eyes. This sexual thing seems interesting. Ask around, become involved. Just pointing it out. We're not talking about some kind of cult with members here. You made it up. The homosexual underground? Why, yes I am, officer. Why? Do you want to investigate? Oh, it's a pleasure group. A sabrosa pleasure group congregating in cellars under the cover of night. Saturday night. Sometimes even Friday night. Or Thursday night. Sometimes the congregating doesn't even end. It carries on into our daily life. Oh, we're ambitious. We want to destroy the last vestiges of meaning. The last things people in Rebishol have to hold on to. The true symbols of security. The meaning of man and woman, mother and father, their marriage. Everything will be constantly shifting and moving under our rule. The future will belong to a circus of identities just spinning around, surreal and unreal. You won't even know who you are anymore. But do you also like the razzle-dazzle of gold? Do you like parties and discos and having fun under the vibrant lights of Saturday night? Because instead of the traditional family unit, we're going to have all this razzmatazz. And mysteries, of course, too. Mysteries of sexual nature, very esoteric. And disco music and drugs. You can't just get into it. You have to be born into it. One is either already in the homosexual movement, or forever excluded from it. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's exactly what we're looking for. Who knows, maybe you were homosexual in the past. Maybe all of that has been repressed. I have to say that you do look like someone who might be part of the underground. You have that very distinctive... I can't understand what's going on here, look. Do think about it, officer. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. A man like you can figure out his sexuality in a working day. It won't be 20 hours unless you want to enter the heightened realms of the Phantasm Erotique afterwards. It may be 20 hours or more. But that would be on your own time. Bye-bye, gendarme. 